Hey everyone, welcome back to Virtualization How To. And today we're diving into a topic that is no doubt on your list of things to try in the home lab, Kubernetes. Specifically, we're going to explore the best Kubernetes distros for your home lab in 2024. If you're looking to set up Kubernetes at home, stick around because I've got some great options to share with you. So let's get started. First of all, why use Kubernetes? Isn't it complicated and a headache to manage? Yes, it can be. But it is arguably the coolest way to run containers in a way that has HA or high availability. And HA just simply means your containers are protected from a host or other hardware failures. I like to think of Kubernetes for running your containers like a hypervisor cluster that we've traditionally run for the past few decades now running virtual machines with shared storage and other components if you have a host that fails another host just simply spins up those virtual machines well the same is true in kubernetes if you have a kubernetes host that fails a, another host or a healthy host just simply spins up those pods as they are called in kubernetes and you're off and running like nothing ever happened Setting up Kubernetes in a home lab can also be a fantastic way to gain a hands-on experience with container orchestration. But with so many distributions available, it can also be a bit overwhelming to choose the right one. Based on a recent blog post that I posted on the new blog that I have spun up called Tech to Cloud, I've narrowed it down to the top contenders for 2024 that I feel are an easy way to deploy and install Kubernetes in just a few minutes, and you will be up and running with your first kubectl command in just a few minutes. So let's break that list down. First up, we have MicroKates. If there's one solution that you can get up and running quickly and easily, it's MicroKates. This is a lightweight Kubernetes distribution from Canonical, the same company that makes Ubuntu, and it's designed to run on resource-constrained devices. While it's a great fit for edge clusters, you can also use it as a lightweight home lab Kubernetes without much hassle. Now, why MicroKates? First of all, it's easy to set up with a simple snap command. It has low resource usage, and it also supports add-ons for extended functionality and you can also run it inside of a Windows subsystem for Linux or WSL instance making it even easier if you're running a Windows workstation to get your hands on microcates. Now let's see how to install microcates. So we have a Windows subsystem for Linux terminal open and we are going to run this simple one line command to get microcates installed for our home lab environment. And that command is sudo snap install microcates and we need to pass the classic flag. Now that we've installed microcates, we can check the status of the cluster by issuing the command sudo microcates status. And we can scroll back up just a little bit. We can see microcates is running. High availability is set to no, which makes sense because we at this point are just in a single node configuration, just having installed microcates in our Windows subsystem for Linux environment. However, the cool thing is you can now go to sudo microcates kubectl get nodes and we see that we've got our single node cluster up and running. We can issue other commands such as sudo microcates kubectl get all and then dash A for all namespaces. And we can see all of our kube system resources that are available. So super cool, as you guys can see, in just a couple of minutes, we have a very powerful installation of Kubernetes in microcates. And if you notice, if we go back to sudo microcates status, there are a tremendous amount of add-ons that you can add on to your microcates cluster. Assert Manager, Community Dashboard, GPU add-on, including Rookself storage for microcates. So a powerful Kubernetes distribution that you can easily start playing around with Kubernetes clustering in your home lab. Next, let's talk about the next Kubernetes variant on our list, and that is Minikube. Minikube is a popular choice for setting up a single 
single node Kubernetes cluster. And it supports many different virtualization technologies. So if you're running KVM, if you're running Hyper-V, if you're running Docker, and also again, you can run it inside of Windows Subsystem for Linux or WSL. So it provides a lot of great options on the virtualization side for whatever environment that you already have up and running in your home lab. Now, why Minikube? Well, it's easy to set up and use like MicroCates. I would say it's a bit more complex than MicroCates to get configured and up and running. However, it's excellent for learning and development environments, and it supports those multiple virtualization drivers that you can run Minikube on top of. So let's see how we can get up and running with Minikube in our home lab. Now let's install Minikube. The installation of Minikube requires a few more commands, but we're going to explain what these are. To begin with, we are simply installing a few necessary components such as curl, wget, and some app transport HTTPS modules. Then as you can see on the second line, we are pulling down the Minikube release. And then finally, we are installing Minikube into our user local bin Minikube folder. So let's run these commands. Now that Minikube is installed, let's check the Minikube version. And we're running version 1.33.1. Also, we need to install kubectl. If you remember in MicroCates, we had access to kubectl, but it's the version that is compatible with MicroCates that is bundled with that solution. So we need to install kubectl to work with Minikube as well as other Kubernetes variants. So let's paste in those commands. First off, we are simply just curling kubectl. Next, we need to change the mode of that kubectl executable. And then finally, we want to move our kubectl command into the user local bin folder. And now we should have access to kubectl, and we do. Finally, we need to configure Minikube to start, and we're telling it which driver we're going to use. In this case, we're using Docker, which I have already pre-installed in this environment. So we just simply issue the command Minikube start dash dash driver equals Docker. So now, as you can see, we have Minikube installed, and one of the neat things that it does for us automatically is it sets a context to our Minikube cluster, so we don't have to do that manually. And as we can see, we've got Minikube ready as a control plane, and we're running version 1.30.0. Now, moving on in the list, we have K3S by Rancher Labs. K3S is an optimized, lightweight Kubernetes distribution that can run on an ARM architecture as well as x86 and IoT devices. It's designed to be easy to install and manage. It's a simple binary that you download, and you can be up and running with that Kubernetes cluster. Even though it's meant for production, networks. It's also a great distribution for home lab since it can run as a single or multiple nodes and you can even set up things like HA and shared storage with it. And you can also install it with a single script from Rancher. Now, why K3S? Well, once again, it's a lightweight Kubernetes distribution and it's easy to set up. It's suitable for single or multiple nodes and it's ideal for resource constrained environments. All of those things are a great fit for most home lab environments. So let's take a look and see how we can get up and running easily with K3S. Installing K3S is as simple as a one line command. It basically pulls down the install script from K3S.io and runs the script. So let's run that one line command. As we can see with this simple script, our K3S cluster has been started. We can verify our K3S installation by issuing the command K3S dash dash version. And we can see we've got K3S version 1.29. Now to interact with our K3S cluster with kubectl, we need to do just a few configuration steps. First of all, we need to copy the Etsy Rancher K3S, K3S.yaml file to our home directory. And then we're going to set a path statement to reference this file for our K3S kubectl configuration. Now we have copied it, so what we want to do is issue the command to add permissions for our current user, Linux admin. Then we want to export the kubeconfig path statement to reference the k3s.yaml file. Now we can take a look at our kubectl config by issuing the command kubectl config view. Finally, we should be able to interact with our K3S cluster. 
Now you might not realize it, but Docker Desktop includes a Kubernetes environment. It's super easy to enable right from the Docker Desktop settings, and it allows you to get up and running with a single node Kubernetes environment that you can develop on, you can learn on, and you can just simply play around with and learn the workings of Kubernetes. Now, why Docker Desktop Kubernetes? Well, it's easy to enable and use, and most likely most of us have Docker Desktop already installed and configured. It's great for development and testing, and it doesn't require dedicated hardware. You simply run it on a workstation that you already use as your daily driver or a part-time home lab server. So let's see how to enable Kubernetes in Docker Docker Desktop. So after opening Docker Desktop, you will navigate to the Docker Desktop settings. You will see an option for Kubernetes under your settings menu. After we click Kubernetes, we have a simple checkbox that allows us to enable Kubernetes. And if you note the description, it allows it to start a Kubernetes single node cluster when starting Docker Desktop. That is literally it. All we have to do is check the box and then click the apply and restart button. Then we will see a Kubernetes cluster installation confirmation dialog box. And we'll note it'll tell us that the installation takes a few minutes and requires an internet connection. And that is so that Docker Desktop will be able to download the Kubernetes installation that it needs. So we're simply going to click the install button. And as simple as that, we've got Kubernetes enabled. And as we can see here, we've got Kubernetes running. Now let's see if we can connect to our Docker desktop Kubernetes installation. So we can see the name of our node is Docker desktop. It's a control plane node and it's running version 1.29.2. Last but not least, we have Rancher desktop. Rancher Desktop is a great alternative to Docker Desktop, and it offers an even more Kubernetes-centric approach than Docker Desktop. It's even built all around Kubernetes for running Rancher Desktop. And one of the things that I really like about Rancher Desktop is that it provides a tremendous amount of flexibility in which Kubernetes version that you want to spin up in Rancher Desktop. You can literally select the version that you want Rancher Desktop to install as your Kubernetes cluster. Now that is a great advantage for those that are in development or that must work with a specific version of Kubernetes, perhaps that they're running in production and they need to develop also locally on that same version of Kubernetes. So Rancher Desktop makes that process super easy. So why Rancher Desktop? Well, it runs Kubernetes under the hood with K3S, which is a Kubernetes distribution that we've already discussed on the list. It allows you to choose the Kubernetes version, and that's something that is not as easily done in some of the other Kubernetes distros that we've mentioned on the list. And it's not available to do in Docker Desktop. You simply have to accept the version of Kubernetes that Docker Desktop installs for you. And it's ideal for developers and home lab enthusiasts. Like Docker Desktop that we've already mentioned, you don't have to have dedicated hardware. You just simply install Rancher Desktop on your daily driver workstation or part-time home lab server that you also use as your daily driver and you're up and running with Kubernetes. So let's see how to configure Kubernetes in Rancher Desktop. So when you install Rancher Desktop, one of the first things that you're prompted to do is to set up Kubernetes. And as you notice, the default is enable Kubernetes and it will select the latest stable release. We can also go in and select the latest release, which is 130.2 at the time of this video. However, we'll leave it at the 1.29.6 stable release. It also allows you to pick your container engine as a default. We can select container D or we can use Docker D. So I'm just going to select the defaults on everything across the board. So we simply click OK. And as we can see, after the initial setup and selection of our Kubernetes version, we can see that the Kubernetes cluster is showing at 1.29.6 as what we selected. And we can see it's registering the WSL distribution, which it's using underneath the hood. And we can see that our Rancher desktop 
is indeed enabled with Kubernetes. After the cluster is online, it has some really neat utilities that we can use from within Rancher Desktop. For example, we have the cluster dashboard, and this is a really great little utility that is built into Rancher Desktop that allows you to see all of your Kubernetes resources, such as namespaces, nodes, events, workloads, so on and so forth. So I can click the nodes, and we can see our single node Kubernetes cluster that is running on this particular machine. We can also go to the command line and look at things with kubectl. So kubectl, get nodes, and we're going to see our Rancher desktop node, which is win10test, the host that Rancher desktop is running on. And again, we're running 129.6k3s. Great solution in Rancher desktop that allows you to easily spin up a Kubernetes home lab with little effort. So there you have it, the best Kubernetes distros for your home lab in 2024. And the best is subjective. These are Kubernetes installations that I think are super easy. They're very effective in learning and you can easily get up and running without a lot of complicated steps or processes. Whether you're just starting out or looking to build a complex setup, there is a Kubernetes distribution for you. Make sure to check out my full blog post on tech to cloud for a detailed guide on setting up your Kubernetes home lab using the Kubernetes variants that we have discussed in detail in this video. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to Virtualization How To for more tech tutorials, reviews, and just cool stuff. Also hit the bell icon to stay updated on the latest videos released. Thanks for watching and please do keep on home labbing, stay safe out there, and I will see you in the next video.